went literally overnight, um, or if I'm truthful, within a week, uh, from a ballroom auction to online auctions. And that has been one of our highlights, how we've adapted uh, very quickly um, to be able to sell since March and when COVID really hit, uh, over 1,750 properties sold commercially and residentially. 2020 is, is actually looking like it's going to be a record year for uh, for take up, certainly in, in the big box market. Uh, we're seeing Amazon continuing to expand. Um, I guess high street retailers, a number of those are, are trying to play uh, catch up. And as a result of, of both of those elements, we, we continue to see expansion, uh, certainly of local logistics, uh, of, of, of last mile delivery. The number one highlight for us is entering into a um, joint venture with a new um, capital partner, AIMCO. Uh, that was to or is to redevelop uh, a ground up office building of 165,000 square feet in at Nine Elms. Um, I think it's like all these things, once you're faced with a degree of adversity, you really find out what the team and the culture of the business has been. So in our loan business, we, you know, we continue to be very, very strong and very, very solid. And, and I think that will continue to perform well because I think the non-bank lending market will continue to grow. Starting a new job on the 1st of April in the middle of a pandemic does seem a bit like a, uh, an April Fool's joke. Um, but um, so obviously that, that has been a highlight. The marvel of vaccines being developed in, yes, in less than a year really can't be overstated. Showing really the potential when you combine technology and collaboration and offering us hope for other major challenges such as climate change. really came into the beginning of this year with a lot of optimism. I mean, the, the market was improving, the supply demand dynamics in real estate made a lot of sense. The economy was getting better and it was getting stronger and it was starting to really grow and um, unemployment was down. And obviously with COVID, uh, we really got knocked sideways. We've seen wild swings in the economy, which is challenging in itself, but also many of the usual transmission mechanisms between the economy and the property market have been interrupted. Uncertainty clauses in valuations, gated funds, temporary measures from lenders, and government support schemes and interventions. These are all things that have helped us through a very challenging year, but have complicated data interpretation. Having to rethink and question everything that we thought we knew about our portfolio. You know, we were, because of COVID-19, we were asking existential questions about retail, about offices, about hotels. I think landlords and, uh, and tenants have been forced to talk to each other. And I think that, um, you know, uh, have hopefully gained a better understanding of each other's businesses and really, uh, you know, have had to collaborate. Uh, and really the interesting thing in terms of highlight also is to see how different asset classes are performing, right? So you have retail that has done exceptionally poorly in the past year for a lot of obvious reasons. Um, and residential has done really well also uh, because rates are so low and, and, and mortgage financing is plentiful. The rent collection uh, on behalf of our, um, our, our investor partners. Um, as you know, we, we've got a large resale portfolio um, with a rent roll of 67 and a half million pounds a year. Um, that is an awful lot of rent to collect over during COVID. Yeah, well, retail's taken a hammering um, in uh, 2020. Obviously, the lockdown uh, has meant that um, a lot of retail has gone online. People haven't been able to, uh, to visit retail centres. Um, but equally, as soon as um, lockdown restrictions uh, were lifted, uh, we saw in our retail parks very, very strong um, returns, footfall, and turnover, uh, indeed, even uh, in excess of pre-down, pre-COVID numbers. It's been brutal for everyone to sort of suddenly be thrust into this working from home experiment. But it's, it's I think, probably going to be a very positive thing for occupiers. It's been a real focus on, on you know, the, the health and welfare of, of their of their um, employee base, and I think. Off the back of that, it's really made them think about what the physical real estate they occupy needs to be. But we've had this sort of 
contradicting situation where um, sales have been pretty average. Um, I think we've hit probably 30% of what we were um, uh, hoping for against this background of the prop tech hype that everyone's going, oh my God, if, if they don't take it on now, they never will. We can't tackle gen the whole of gender balance on the one hand and the whole of race and ethnicity issues on the other. But I'm not saying we've got gender balance right, we clearly haven't. Well, clearly the most important trend is the one that's already started, is going to be the impact of the vaccine on wider society. It's the confidence that people will gain from knowing that the world is a little bit safer uh, for them to operate in, which will enable us to build confidence through 2021. That won't happen automatically. It's going to take probably at least two quarters for that to really impact a uh, wider economy. But when it does, I think you'll see a real rebirth in demand and a surge in interest in, in the wider economy. And that's why I think leisure and hospitality in those times will start to see a great surge. So in summary, I would say you have a world opening up to a place that probably was about four years ago, which is quite interesting. It allows us to kind of reset our thinking on different asset classes. And at the same time, you know, the role of impact, the role of kind of ESG focus um, uh, aspects become quite important, particularly the S of ESG. I think ESG and the focus and importance on governance uh, is absolutely here to stay. As a company, you know, a number of years ago, we made a commitment to be a leader in all things ESG, ranging from you know, our activities inside the company to improve our environmental footprint and performance, to our efforts to issue green bonds, to changes to the corporate governance of our company to improve and strengthen independence of the board. It is to say that diversity and inclusion is not going to go away um, is gross understatement. You know, it is much more efficient to be diverse as an organisation, and all the statistics show that. Businesses will begin to look at property far more as a service than actually an asset, and I think the property providers that recognise this will be the ones that win. One trend that we're going to be seeing uh, going forward is the rise in the number of 18 year olds in the population uh, obviously that should feed through uh, into additional uh, student demand which again is very positive in the, for the industry um, in terms of investors in the pbsa sector i think we will definitely see uh, you know, the tier one cities uh, getting most of the attention um, but having said that i would uh, definitely say that you know secondary and, and tertiary markets uh, should not be ignored so we think uh, trends in, in the debt markets for next year, uh, we think that we will see a, a similar story to, to the second half of this year with um, a, a number of the sort of debt funds um, who've raised fresh capital looking to, to deploy quite aggressively. I think the adoption of, of software systems, I think, will continue to, to grow. Um, I don't think at the exponential rate that everyone thinks it will, because I think we've been knocked back by at least six to nine months. I believe retail can recover in 2021 and thereafter. Without doubt, there is room for physical retail in a multi-channel uh, retailer's armory portfolio. We are seeing very strong footfall and sales in the majority of retail parks we manage, uh, to the extent that in some instances we are actually obtaining competitive tension, competitive bidding from retailers for vacant units and either maintaining the original rental tone or in some instances actually moving rents on. Property is a people business. Uh, we like live interaction. We like looking people in the eye and understanding exactly what they're really saying. I think this format of Zoom and Teams, you know, it's got, it's got us through uh, a period but you know we are social beings and and when you take that away you know people genuinely do do struggle and that's why you know coming back to offices offices certainly aren't dead we might use them in a different format but we need that human interaction and I think that will be an important part of how we get through 2021. 
and office locations will be interesting to see what the pickup is. Will it move more regionally or will the central hubs recover? We, we see there's going to be a huge flight to quality. Uh, there could be a two tier market where um, tenants just don't want to take up the, the second hand grey space. The big opportunity that the pandemic has really um, uh, given us, uh, not on purpose obviously, is, is, is an opportunity to really build back better. The phrase is obviously being reused uh, uh, by, by everyone. I think there's an enormous amount of not only pent up capital, but pent up desire from uh, people involved in deploying that capital to actually do stuff and, and make the most of things. The CEOs who, who, who are the CEOs of our member organisations are clearly highly committed to diversity and inclusion. We're concentrating on gender balance. We're looking at issues around race and ethnicity. Other organisations in the real estate space are looking at other things. So obviously Freehold look at LGBTQ plus issues. Um, there's other organisations looking at physical disability. There's a number of organisations now looking at issues around social mobility. Becoming more innovative um, as a business and a bit more agile as a business. The lesson for 2021 for most of us should be to take the benefits from 2020 and the fact that we've been forced to slow ourselves down, forced to spend more time with our family, with our friends, with, our, with the people in our business in the same location and, and not think that we can cure everything by charging around the world at all times. Thank God we have a great business. We got the great following of our investors, but really our clients is really the center of our focus. And we should be continuing to figure out ways to making sure that we're serving our clients better. Sounds a bit corny, but it's actually quite important. So that's, that's a, a pretty key professional resolution, um, you know, and, and that's important. So see more of my grandson. Um, I'd quite like to see Chelsea win the league, but whether or not they do or not, I don't know. And I want to bring more members into real estate balance. Uh, my personal re resolution for next year is to pluck up the courage to take extended leave and start ticking off the major offshore sailing races that are on my bucket list. Um, to get back to life, you know, to eat chili crab in Singapore, that is my objective uh, for 2021. I believe we've got to keep an open mind. We've got to react to the circumstances as they, as they play out but at the same time, not overreact. For 2021, I don't want to use or mention the C word.